Hello, this is Liz Cornell, and today we're going to take a quick look at the hyoid inside the horse's head. So what is the hyoid? Well, as you can see over to the right, it's a fragile and delicate bony apparatus. It's located inside the horse's skull between the mandible bones. It attaches to the horse's tongue actually there at the bottom connecting it, which ultimately connects it to the entire horse's muscle system throughout their body. So it's kind of an amazing little apparatus, to be honest. Now, it's located, as I said, in the head, and there's a pretty good picture uh, that kind of gives you a better idea. The bottom, of course, is where it attaches to the tongue. Now at the top, it'll connect to the TMJ, and the atlas using muscles, ligaments, and fascia. So, and it of course is bilateral, but it is all one unit. Now, this diagram shows you a little bit more of how it connects to the rest of the body. So, there are long muscles, and I'm not going to go, you know, into any detail. But as you can see, the uh, the hyoid itself, I I colored in like a pink color, and then you can see these long muscles coming from the tongue that head to the sternum as well as to the shoulder area. So this is how this little gizmo has has the tongue connecting really to the rest of the, the body of the horse. So it's kind of an amazing uh, little apparatus there. Now, sometimes there's problems with the hyoid. So as a massage therapist, uh, you definitely want to do some checking. And we're going we're gonna to go over that in a few minutes of how you're going to do that. But some of the symptoms will be they'll hold their head sideways, cock sort of funny when eating or being ridden under saddle. With a bit, they can open their mouth, kind of gaping open. They might have a tongue hanging out. Sometimes they have difficulty taking a particular canner lead. Head shaking can occur. <clears throat> they can be better on one rein than the other, turning, for example. Difficulty softening the bit contact. You know, in dressage, of course, we want a nice, chewy, soft contact. And there could be teeth grinding. And in general, if there's dysfunction there, it is going to cause tension and then compensation can start to build throughout the rest of the horse's body. So there's all kinds of things that can go wrong. Shoulders and withers all the way back to their hind ends. So now when it's in dysfunction mode, it could be twisted out of alignment, which is pretty common, or it could actually be fractured. So when we massage it, we have to be pretty careful. Uh, what we're looking for is it's going to feel like sometimes there's little swellings underneath their jaw, and it, there's, there can be facial adhesions next to the hyoid and inside the jaw. Those should be checked and massaged and loosened up a little bit. Sometimes there could be a fracture. X-rays can take a picture of that, so you might recommend that to a client. There is a technique called the hyoid release. It's out online by Heather Mack. She gently pulls the tongue and it gets into like this weird rhythm where the tongue goes back and forth, but you have to grab it with your hand. It's a technique. It can be a little bit risky. You could, you could injure something. You could, um, you know, twist it worse, I guess, but it seems to be something she recommends you can try. Uh, another therapy we can use is the red light therapy, and that can help heal it as well. Hi, Liz Cornell here. Talk to you a little bit about the hyoid. This is my demo horse. This is my mare, Cavatina. I used her for the biomechanics asymmetry video. So I'm using her because she's had, to me, a little bit of a hyoid misalignment for a long time, probably since birth, who knows. So when you want to check the hyoid, you want to put your fingers gently 
just work their way up along the inside of the mandible bone here and just push your way in gently and you might feel some uh, tight fascia maybe a little inflammation it's hard to know but you just want to kind of loosen all that up those uh, fascia adhesions might just need to be a little bit loosened up okay so we check both sides now used to be I would now I'm going to check the other side I probably should be on that side so a lot of horses if they're uncomfortable with it they, they will throw their head now she was throwing her head badly on the right side for years I would check it so honestly I decided since I was going to be doing the video on the hyoid I would go ahead and try to learn how to do the release when you grab the tongue not something I would necessarily recommend to everyone obviously uh, it's a little bit of danger because you're putting your hand in their mouth you could get hurt uh, the other thing is that if you pull too hard you can actually make the hyoid worse it is a delicate uh, apparatus could even fracture it so a lot of caveats there you got to be careful if you want to pursue it I would strongly recommend you practice on your own horses <laughs> okay so anyways so your remedy is to just basically do some light massage in there to loosen things up so when I used to do it on her I would hit something on the right side and if I pushed hard enough she let her head would go right up into the rafters so I knew she was a little bit quirky on that side so I went ahead and got brave and started playing with the tongue method or technique of releasing the hyoid a little bit and honestly she responded quite well to it I felt something the, the one time I tried it I did feel something move with the tongue and at the base of the tongue and then the next ride I could see that her head was no longer tilted and her right ear which always seemed lower to me it has forever was raised up almost level with the left ear I mean quite significantly so that was an exciting revelation for me because I always felt when I flexed her right her head was cocked down a little bit and no one ever said anything no trainer no one ever said but above I could see it was happening so it's not like it was a fault someone ever picked on it's just picked up on it was something me I could see from above and it drove me nuts so that's actually better that's almost totally level when I flexed her right so whatever I did that day with the tongue pulling technique helped her out and was like wow okay <laughs> I guess it can work so I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did now I'm taking her off the cross ties because or at least on one side because if she does decide to throw her head I don't want her to you know panic and break the cross ties she hasn't done it in a while but she can do it I do carry sugars and after I do some work with the tongue I do give her a sugar as a reward and so let me just see I'll show you briefly oh, oh there we go oh, oh, oh. There. so I'm gonna just let it go see how it goes back and forth I'm just gonna do that for you know 10 or 15 times and then I'm going to let it back. Good girl. What a good girl. So if you do it on one side, you got to do it on the other. What a good girl. Thank you. I, I may take her off this cross tie too. Good girl. Come here. Yeah, I know. I just ran out of sugar. Okay. So now we're going to do it on this side. What a good girl. Yeah. Grab it with my left hand and just let it gently left. Yeah, there. Oops. All right. Well, that was enough to give you an idea. Good girl. Good girl. Did you get another sugar? So that's the. As you can see, she's not so great at it because I've only done it one other time. So I figured she'd be a little resistant. 
Some horses, when you when people do it all the time, they just stand there. Some horses need it done quite a bit, evidently. So that's uh, so that's the the tongue release technique. Now I will just say briefly. I know I ran out of sugars. I will just say briefly that in working with the hyoid, I had a head shaking case once, very bad, literally 20 hours a day. This mare stood around shaking. She was a jumper, shake her head up and down. I went in to do therapy on the horse. Uh, cranial sacral was what I was hoping would make a difference, did nothing. She was just a basket case. I mean, except when she was eating, or trotting and cantering under saddle. Walking under saddle, she would do it. But unless she was eating or trotting or cantering, her head was always like this. So she had lots of muscles and crazy muscles in her neck and under neck muscles from doing it. But the interesting thing, and I'm bringing it up because I checked her hyoid that day. This was a couple years ago checked her hyoid, and as soon as I put my fingers in next to the hyoid, she stopped her head shaking. And she would stand there the whole time, quiet as a mouse. i take my fingers off, up and down she would go. Put my fingers back, she'd stop like a statue. I did it at least 10, 15 times, and I showed the owner. I said, hey, something's going on with the hyoid in this horse. And I said, you really need to get her taken to a clinic here in Ocala where we have clinics, uh, and get it x-rayed, get it looked at. I said, something's going on, but if you want to cure the head shaking. At the time, I wasn't doing the tongue technique, and I, so I, uh, I had to just leave it up to her taking it to the vet. So I, don't, I didn't follow up to see what happened, and I should have. This was a long time ago. Uh, but anyways, you, it can make a difference for some horses. Uh, the other case that I had, uh, since it is, does connect somewhat to the thyroid, I have a, had a starving horse case just recently actually, and it's a long story, but the horse started starving herself. She, she stopped eating, like overnight, couldn't figure it out. And what I figured out, and this went on for three months, and she was a bag of bones. It was an extremely sad case. The owner was beside herself trying to figure it all out. The vet, uh, lots of vets came and looked at her. She took her to a special uh, a clinic in Ocala, even trucked her in there. And basically, the comments from all the vets were, "Well, she's the healthiest starving horse we've ever seen." So, long story short, she's getting ready to put her down. I came in, kind of as a last ditch effort. And what I found was that she was, had a lot of inflammation in the hyoid area. The poor thing. So as I worked with the hyoid, she had huge reactions. And, but after I did a lot of massage work in there, when we were all done, she actually went to her stall and she ate for 20 minutes and everybody was blown away. So that was a great, great day. I checked the next day, she stopped eating again. I went back, massaged the hyoid a little bit more and she ate for 20 minutes again after I was all done. And then, boom, then she stopped eating after that. So she did eat, like, a, you know, a couple drinks. So, what ended up happening is I had my vet come and he took x-rays. As I said, just check the hyoid. I don't know what's going on. But what the other thing I did find in the thyroid area here was some inflammation. That was the other thing I found that first day, which I showed to my vet. So we ruled out the hyoid because that was clean. He took x-rays and it was fine. He was also looking for a TMJ fracture or something too. And then in the end, he did a test on her thyroid because the blood work testing she had done for cancer was all fine. And in the end, her thyroid was off the charts low. So she needed thyroid medication. So that's what ended up happening. But it was all interesting in this area. It was interesting since the hyoid does work in conjunction uh, alongside the thyroid. It's so close that after I would work with this, she'd start eating. It was kind of crazy. So uh, in the end, we couldn't save the mare because 
the even though our thyroid was off the charts, she still didn't really want to eat even after the medication that she went on. So she was recently put down, which is sad. Uh, but the owner did everything she could uh, in that case. And so another thi uh, another hyoid, excuse me, hyoid case that I had, I'll just briefly mention, was a mare that was going around with her tongue hanging outside of her mouth when she was ridden. I was driving the owner crazy. So I went in and I was like, wow, she, I mean, she had a lot of inflammation underneath there, a lot. And no amount of my massaging was gonna get rid of all that inflammation. So I said, you better get a vet. And basically, the vet wasn't sure what it was, but they had basically put her on antibiotics. So it was some kind of infection that was going on in there. And this had been brewing for months. This wasn't like, you know, this had been going on a week. It had been going on for months. And so it literally took a lot of antibiotics, but it took about six months, she told me later, for the tongue to go back in. But it was really a bad, some kind of infection in there. So that was another case. So that's it for the video and uh, best of luck. Let me know if you have any questions.